Live from WOIDT in West Des Moines, this is ABC 5 News at 5.30 in High Definition. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ron Morosco. It's tradition for people to buy Christmas trees the day after Thanksgiving. For many years, people have ventured out to get their own live tree. ABC 5's Jason Rantala visited One Tree Farm, where a longtime custom lives on. It's tonight's top story. Jason, thank you. A 100-mile-an-hour police chase ended this morning after a state trooper shot the suspect. The incident happened near Council Bluffs when a trooper tried to pull over a man driving a stolen SUV. During the chase, the trooper's car went into a ditch along Highway 275. The suspect was shot when he drove toward the trooper. The trooper was not hurt, but will be on paid leave during the investigation. The suspect is recovering at an Omaha hospital. An old wine woman shot by her husband in October is out of the hospital. Police say Nikki Medor had been shot multiple times by her husband, Myron Medor. He then shot himself at their old wine home. Myron died from his injuries. Nikki was being treated at university hospitals in Iowa City for more than a month. Just a few days after being suspended, the head wrestling coach at Jessup High School resigned. No one's saying why Brent Myers, who's also a middle school teacher, resigned or why he was about to be fired. A special school board meeting had been called for last Friday night to consider firing Myers, but he handed in his resignation Friday morning. The school board unanimously accepted his resignation. Work continues in LeClaire to clean up a fuel and oil spill and remove a partially sunken towboat on the Mississippi River. A salvage vessel will attempt to lift the boat out of the water. So far, more than 25,000 gallons of oil has been pumped from the towboat. Another 35,000 gallons of oily water mixture has been removed from the river. The boat was carrying about 91,000 gallons of petroleum products when it sank last week. The Coast Guard's concerned thousands of migratory birds north of Leclerc will move toward the spill as river ice moves south. Tomorrow, the Republican Party of Iowa will hold a nominating convention to select the party's nominee in the House District 25 special election. The seat's being vacated by Republican Julian Garrett, who was elected to the Senate in a special election last month. Garrett's replacing Kent Sorensen, who resigned after an ethics investigation. The convention begins at 6 tomorrow night at the Norwalk Easter Public Library. And when lawmakers return to the State House next month, legalizing medical marijuana will once again be a topic of discussion. Democratic Senator Joe Balcom says he'll pursue legislation seeking to legalize medical marijuana. A total of 20 states, including the District of Columbia, have legalized the drug. Balcom says he'll offer bills reclassifying marijuana as a drug with medical benefits and creating a medical marijuana program modeled on New Mexico's system. For the past month, Des Moines Water Works has been asking customers for their input on current water fluoridation practices. Des Moines Water Works has been adding fluoride to the water to help prevent cavities for the last 60 years. But in the last couple years, federal health agencies have reversed their recommendations and now Waterworks is considering stopping the practice. Waterworks will report its findings to the Board of Waterworks Trustees Planning Committee this Tuesday. An Iowa distillery will celebrate a major milestone this week. On Wednesday, the Templeton Rye Distillery will bottle its one millionth bottle of Templeton Rye whiskey. Thursday, the millionth bottle will be shipped to the state warehouse and enter the Iowa distribution system. The bottle will have a special nine-digit code, and parts of the code will be revealed over the next few weeks. The person who finds the bottle will be invited to the Templeton Rye Distillery for a tour and tasting. Well, each week on ABC5, we put the spotlight on Iowa's farmers. This week, we head to Ames to learn about sustainable agriculture. But this group of students became the teachers through a new project. They created an informational artwork project called Project Localize. The venture took them across the state and even to the nation's capital. They teach how sustainable agriculture can and is affecting every aspect of the farming industry. Farm to Family is a feature you'll see every Sunday on 10 at 10. We hope you'll join us tonight. Coming up next on ABC5 News at 5.30, dozens are injured after a commuter train jumps the tracks and derails. And using international diplomacy to free a U.S. citizen being held prisoner. We'll be right back. You're watching ABC5 News at 5.30 in high definition with Ron Morosco. Central Iowa's most accurate forecast with meteorologist Sam Schreier and sports with Joey Donia. This is ABC5 News at 5.30 in high definition. In New York City, at least four people were killed and dozens hurt when a Metro North passenger train jumped the rails. 
Four rail cars were tossed on their sides. 11 of those injured are in serious condition. Tonight, the search for answers is underway. This is Marcy Gonzalez reports from New York City. Freezing rain is being blamed for a multi-car crash this morning in Massachusetts. 70 cars and three tractor trailers were involved in the accident, which closed a portion of Interstate 290. 30 people suffered minor injuries. Now, as a precaution, other roads near the accident were closed so crews could treat the pavement. Paul Walker, one of the stars of the Fast and Furious movies, died in a car accident Saturday. The car Walker was riding and hit a tree and caught fire. When rescue crews arrived, the car was still on fire. After the fire was put out, what was left of the car remained wrapped around a tree. We heard the crash. We heard the explosion. And uh, we got up here as quick as we could to find out what it was. This was just a tragic accident that happened on a joyride. They were just taking the car for a drive. Walker and the driver died at the scene. Investigators say it appears the driver lost control before hitting the tree. Walker's most recent film, Hours, a movie about Hurricane Katrina, will be released in two weeks. He was 40 years old. The White House is asking North Korea to release a U.S. veteran of the Korean War being held captive for five weeks. Merrill Newman, an 85-year-old retired California finance executive, was on a sightseeing trip to North Korea when he was detained October 26th. He reappeared this weekend in a videotaped message released by North Korean state media. He apologized for what he called hostile acts. On this trip, I can un understand that in U.S. and Western countries, there is misleading information and propaganda about DPRK. The United States has no official diplomatic relations with North Korea, but Swedish embassy officials visited Newman Saturday. They say he's alive and receiving his medication. Well, Sam is back, and Sam, not the nice day we had yesterday, but still in the 40s. Still in the 40s, and we actually have kind of a treat temperature-wise the next couple days, but then not so much. It's all downhill. I'll have the full forecast come out on ABC 5 News at 5.30. Wow, 8 and 6 degrees. Yeah, we come 20-degree <laughs> drop, it looks like, Tuesday to Wednesday. Ooh. Sam, thank you. <laughs> well, Will Hall is in for Joey today, and Will, some wrestling going on in Ames today. All right. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you right back here at 10. Have a great evening.